Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. So, guys, we did this Patreon exclusive, what's really going on with Klaus Schwab and the hidden plan for humanity that you, I don't, you're not going to really get it anywhere else, I don't think, in the detail that we're able to give through the guides. I mean, maybe there's some small channelers out there that could be uh, very well. Other channelers like us that are, are getting... Uh, small groups, the info, but you know, if again, if, if it's coming over in massive amounts, it, there's going to be some method of control or purpose to it. So, you know, we're thankful that we are a small channel. We have no aspirations to be huge. Uh, if we were to grow too fast, uh, you know, we would be a much higher threat. Yet at the same time, we do want to awaken as many people as we possibly can. And so we got information from the guides on what is really going on with Klaus and <clears throat> has everything to do with CERN. <laughs> uh, surprise, surprise, surprise. Check this out. Guangdong Province, China has evacuated 110,000 residents due to heavy rain. Massive flooding, four deaths, 10 people missing have been reported. Major rivers overflowed, prompting... Close monitoring of water levels, officials had warned of a potential once in a hundred years peak in river levels, but it hadn't happened by noon. And this is part of the low lying Pearl River Delta, which is prone to floods due to the rise in sea levels and storm surges caused by, you can guess what they're going to tell us, kids, global climate change. Your cars, your emissions, your methane, your farts. Your cows. Yes, absolutely. So, oh, and by the way, you can't have cows anymore because they might spread H1N1, you know, or some form of bird flu. Oh, and by the way, you can't have, you know, fresh cow milk because it might actually heal your gut. Oh, this world is nothing but a one big lie after another. And many people are realizing that, thankfully. Others, they're just worried about, you know, their mocha latte or their frappuccino or the fact that the dollar menus are getting too expensive nowadays. Yeah, there, there's people that do worry about that. And that's OK. That's where they're at. <laughs> it is where they're at. And yet, you know, we could have another Tartarian or biblical flood and it wipes it all away except for a few stragglers that come out after you know the worst is over and here we go again yes absolutely we have so many people that do understand this this is from tom fitton talking about the sickle maker we we know i mean i know you guys know all about this and yes the real criminals are not in jail they're probably on luxury lot yacht somewhere. Uh, they're enjoying Maui, you know, even though the people that used to live over in Maui are not allowed to go on their property anymore. You, you get the picture. You get the picture. This world has been hijacked. Everything about the world has been hijacked. And when criminals go free, but innocent people are constantly attacked and... You, you, you know, it's just subject to all sorts of horrible, well, you know, the Greek way of looking at it would be that, you know, our fates have been determined by the gods. It's just what the gods have planned for us. Yeah, screw that. The reality is the system does this to us, and we understand that. And you can see, look, look what we were talking about. We were talking about <clears throat> underground reptilian cities. Anuna, yeah, Nunaki. Oh, and you get the little Wikipedia. AI is so smart, why can't it figure out that it gives itself away when they give you the little Wik Wikipedias? Mm -hmm. I know. Well, it's almost like a badge of honor anymore. You're getting, you're getting pushback because you're telling the truth. And, and in a world like this, the most criminal thing you can do is uh, get the truth out there. They, they certainly do not make it easy. And if, if there is a way to bring about some type of punishment, they will. Absolutely. You know, again, it's just so obvious when this word causes a Wikipedia. But if you, if you wanted to talk about Celtic mythology or Slovakian mythology or Chinese mythology, it, it doesn't give you the wiki. 
Why this? Why this? Because again, it, it is an obvious showing. It, it, it just, it tells you who the real controllers are. Absolutely. And Brian Forrester, uh, we've talked about his channel before. He's got like 397,000 subscribers. He's not a huge channel, um, but he is somebody that's done a real lot to expose a lot to the public. And um, he does he, he does actual tours in the uh, a lot of different areas, actually. Uh, you can catch him down in Peru, and you can also catch him in Egypt at times. He's done so much to expose these elongated heads. This is a relatively new one. Two two days ago, 27,000 views. I wish it was 27 million views. Maybe we could start to really change the paradigm. This is talking about the DNA results. There's been multiple DNA results came in. Um, and again, the newest DNA results, which cost a lot of money to do. Uh, they're showing that these skulls do not belong in Peru. And, and in fact, you know, these skulls are very, very similar and of the same haplogroup. What's haplogroup? Haplogroup is like a genetic family of humans, you know, Homo sapiens uh, genetic family, a tribe, so to speak. And the haplogroup that we find here in Peru, we also find over in the Black Sea. We find it in Crimea, you know, where they're fighting Ukraine, uh, that whole thing. In fact, you'll find that I think the places that have had constant war, especially in times where things can be revealed, are usually the places where there's more evidence hidden of the genocidal exterminations of different beings upon the planet that are exterminated because they're not as controllable as what the control system wants. The good news is, again, we've stepped out of the dark age. Does that mean uh, that there's going to be no death and destruction? It's all, you know, peachy keen, roses? No, not at all. The system, in fact, will, will work harder uh, to maintain control now because the light is shining on it ever so brightly, ever increasingly brightly. Have you guys noticed uh, since the eclipse? Do you, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Maybe it's different where you are. But it certainly seems brighter to me. It really seems brighter to me. I was feeling the sun today. The sun seems more intense. By the way, uh, I was looking at space weather. Uh, there's a lot more areas of interest developing on the sun right now. There's a lot more sunspot areas. The sun's getting ready to help us. It is going to help us on this path. And it is the key to the ascension process. And that's why people like Gil Bates want to block out the sun and now they're trying to block it out as much as possible they're even you know admitting that they're blocking out the sun it has nothing to do uh, with carbon emissions it has all to do that these beings in control are very much like vampires they hate the sun and and they can no longer tolerate it like we can so in some ways yes they are trying to geoengineer the planet for when the Anunnaki come back to make it a little bit more comfortable for them. Although they do have technology uh, to encase themselves in and help protect themselves, but they are like vampires. They're parasitic leeches that are truly, truly living off of us. And this is what the system does. It, it, it's so much like all the movies, but the movies are there so that they could say, well, we told them and they chose to stay with us. They wanna be slaves. They get down by their bed and they pray at night, literally asking for us to come back. Mm -hmm. It's 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 the sad truth. It's really really quite disturbing once you start to awaken to to the truth of of what they're doing. I think most people just simply cannot put it together, and they don't think that anyone could be could really be that evil, and that's why they refuse to believe and. Um, to me, that's that's a dangerous spot to be in because you're not recognizing the danger for what it is and you're not making the appropriate uh, movements. But that's not my place to judge. Sometimes that's where people are because that's where they are. But we're here for those who who do want to be awake and who do want to get out of the way of, of all of that that's coming. Yeah, and absolutely, again, we are... 
eternal beings ourselves having a temporary human experience. So these skulls are not normal homo sapien skulls. They're not homo sapien sapiens. That's the bottom line. There's something different. Now, they are human. Uh, yeah, but that's the reveal too. You know, where, where the spinal cord attaches is in a different place. They do not have the same plates that we have. And, you know, again, this is actually part of the schooling that I went through uh, doing what I was doing. Um, and so very, very familiar with all this. Um, it's not Homo sapiens, guys. But the reveal is that's not really a big deal because there's been so many different humanoid species on the planet. And we know this. If, if whatever our full yuga cycle is, which, you know, may well be 25,000 years for a full yuga, yuga cycle going through all four and ascending and descending, um, or it may be slightly different. But, you know, I think it is slightly different because there are some things that that don't quite fit yet. Nothing really fits when you're talking time because it is subjective it's subjected, to, I think, to each individual and to where we are and how, how long we've been having these incarnations, even if we are, uh, say, a person that has had a hundred incarnations and you can't remember them all, uh, or you might have a thousand, or maybe you had 10,000, or, or maybe you've had a million humanoid incarnations. Each one of us is a unique being and still we have our own lens and that is so beautiful because you know the real creator of this planet and universe and the source of all it's all about individuality and diversity is beautiful the system wants conformity and so when we when we look at these skulls these skulls are not homo sapiens that's the bottom line yet they are able to have kids with homo sapiens ooh, yeah and when you look again at you could go genesis 6 you could go book of enoch we can go into many other stories we can go into oh the greek myths and legends the norse myths and legends all all, all over the world the same stories the intermingling of giants and different beings now now these are not really giants although they certainly would have looked a lot different than us Fact check, elongated skulls in Peru are human, not alien. So says an expert. And this is from uh, 2021 that this article came out. And <laughs> they're trying to debunk as much as possible. But again, what is human? There's many species of humanoid beings that they can show you. Again, from Homo erectus, Homo habilis, uh, Neanderthals, Denisovans, we could go on to uh, Florinesis, which is that hobbit-like one that m they say may have lived as as close as maybe 30,000 years ago, uh, isolated again in pockets in, in islands. Well, yeah, uh, we, we could buy on that. Scientists will maybe give you that. But the reality is, too, I don't think a lot of these beings were exterminated until after the Younger Dryas. And I think they were exterminated. I think they were hunted down purposefully. We intermingled. We we married in be, with these other humanoid beings' bloodlines. We had kids by them. They're not fallen angels per se. But then again, angels, the original translation, if we're going into the Greek, it's messenger. And everything is just so distorted by the system's perspective and so ingrained that people can't comprehend. Yet, get clarity by looking into some of the legends of the indigenous people around the world. Now, when you look at some of the maps that, again, Jimmy Corsetti Bright Insight does, you know, he's always throwing these maps up and saying, what do you guys think? Well, I, I think, again, our history is a complete lie and fabrication. And I do think that they didn't completely exterminate all these beings 
Perhaps they still haven't um, is, is part of it. I think some beings have learned how to blend into their surroundings very well. Others had a lot of technology that helped them. Leftover technology that they were still able to hold on to even after the Younger Dryas extinction event, which in our estimation was completely purposeful. These, these people could blend in. Look at this. This was just four days ago. And Brian, you know, two days ago, put out his new uh, findings on, on the DNA. And you have this story. Why did these Viking women have cone-shaped skulls? Hmm. Yeah, again, it's, it's damage control. It's damage control. It's those little Twitter uh, things that pop up and say, well, some of our readers want you to know that that video is actually not this or that, you know, it's been fact check. Yeah, they're trying to control the narrative. The reality is when we're not in a dark age, we're completely used to seeing all sorts of humanoid beings, some much larger, some much smaller. We also see beings that are in only our myths and legends, which some of you do see and have been able to see this entire time, like elemental beings. Uh, things like fairies and gnomes and, and elves, and it, it just goes on and on. These myths and legends are full of reality and fact, and it really is just talking about what we normally go through. The only time we don't is in the darkest of dark ages. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just looking, can you take it back to that um, indigenous woman and looking at this uh, like photo <laughs> yeah the this photo here is they really really captured something very unique and significant this is probably one of the most beautiful beings that walked this planet she is an indigenous wisdom holding elder she transferred so much information to to the people of earth now i'm getting that she was created here but her family lineage is from the stars and she was one who carried and held the wisdom of of shamans and medicine men and medicine women for ages to come and this was a royal being and they actually captured her essence so perfectly i mean i'm just sitting here kind of in shock and this is the definition of beauty so long ago is someone who carries that wisdom and carries that knowing and that knowledge that compassion that mother energy that's to be conveyed from one family to the next and and i'm just kind of really in awe of her i mean she's truly truly a a, a princess not not a plastic formed Barbie dolls. This is true beauty that we're looking at here. Whoever did this, I mean, really hats off to them. Well, again, there's there's people that were working with Brian and some people that have been inspired by his work to go ahead and and do recreation. So, you know, they they take the skulls and they basically layer on first the muscles and then they layer on, uh, you know, the the facial characteristics that they're inspired to give and then you know some cases we actually do have hair uh, with some of these skulls and you know there's things like the eye sockets tend to be larger um, you know there's there is cranial deformation that happened because these as Cindy saying these were people that were highly revered and so the people that were homo sapiens let's say wanted to mimic them because they they so were they loved them and were inspired by them so they did deform kids but when you're talking about the skulls that have the attachment of the spinal cord in a different area that's because the weight distribution is different than in homo sapiens so it's going to naturally be in a different area to balance uh, and that's obvious so, yeah, some people in this age are really inspired and they want to share. And that's a beautiful thing. And there's more than one person that has done this, mm -hmm. you know, recreated these beings. Not all giants were evil. And in fact, you know, many of the giants were us. Literally, we were in those bodies. They exterminated us so that when we would reincarnate, we would come into bodies 
that would have less capability to give them resistance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know, and I don't know if there's a way to find out who specifically did this particular one, mm -hmm. but they, they caught the essence, and I don't know if there's some weird way to help them find out, to let them know that, that I, I'm not going by what my opinion is in my mind. I'm going by the impressions, and I'm getting so much energy off this being. I mean, she is a, a storyteller. She's a wisdom keeper. She's a river talker. She's all of these things that shamans should be and should aspire to be along with compassion, full of information on, on health and, and healing and um, it, it's just amazing. That's that's what I got to say. Absolutely. I mean, I feel it too. And I feel an energy that's very much like some of our uh, closest friends and guides too. Yeah. Um, I feel like the similar lineage coming through. Um, so yeah, Ananda Maima type of vibe, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'll uh, leave comments, see if we could get more info on that. I, I think that would be great because I just want someone to know that they've really nailed it. So, you know, they put this out within two days, you know, two days before Brian does his video. And I don't think it's, you know, has anything not to do with the fact that they understand there's going to be more and more evidence coming out that's going to show that there were many different humanoid beings on this planet of very high capability and intelligence. These are uh, the ones that guided humanity through uh, the Bronze Age. And when we go up into the Silver and the Golden Age, the the level of, of benevolence, love, and compassion, the beings that we're interacting with is is just a totally different level. None of the systems that we have in place now are, are going to last and they are going to collapse and let them collapse. It would be beautiful and nice if we could somehow uh, hang on to some of their technologies without being tainted by it. There will be a transition period um, as we go through uh, the changes. And then there are going to be benevolent beings that are going to be able to interact with us because we're no longer under the rule of the darkness exclusively. Part of what you see here, and you know, the Black Sea keeps coming up, and and that's another place that you know I would like to go. I would love to, you know, uh, I would love to have a trip down to Peru, and then from Peru head right over to Turkey, and go explore those regions. You know, hopefully um, we'll be able to do that while we're still able to use these bodies before they get too old. And uh, at the same time, I do think that if you are out of the system's care, if you know what I mean by that, you're going to see miraculous healings. You are going to see life extension. The system is going to offer life extension of a technological kind. But all you need is exposure to the sun. And all you need is time in nature and to root and ground yourself and to shed all the toxins that they've given to us. Um, so here you go, you know, they're basically saying, uh, this researcher is saying that the altered skull shapes were likely seen as symbols of status and attractiveness within the Viking society because of the sheer exoticism. Well, you know, again, cranial deformation, cranial modifications, that's one thing, but actual skulls that have different numbers of plates that's not that's not a variance you see within a, a species like Homo sapiens. It's it's all going to be uh, the same number of plates, regardless of if, if they were distorted or not. Uh, touching on Akhenaten again, to Akhenaten, Nefertiti, elongated uh, skulls, their children, elongated skulls. So the Viking part of it is something that's a little newer. Then you even have this article coming out. Researchers identify genetic variant that helps shape human skull based evolution. Oh, it's just a gene. So these people are abnormal. The gene turns on. Uh, it gets the form of magnum going in the wrong direction. You're full of crap. It, they are so full of BS. And I'm thankful that I could say that in these times and, and know that at least in our family, you know, meaning the evolutionary arts, 
uh, Patreon family. Uh, I'm not going to be taken as a raving lunatic. Um, yeah, maybe out there with some some of the academics that can't, you know. Well, you know, the the reason why, and we had this discussion with our uh, good friend Dr. Joe again, and I'll make sure to uh, give you guys links to Dr. Joe as some were asking about his channel. He he really hasn't done anything to add to his channel for years, um, but he is thinking about um, getting it going again and sharing. He's been basically a guest on many, many channels um, instead of doing his own thing. But what he was saying is, and he understands it, I mean, I still have student loans too. And, and you know, how much money does it cost to go through med school? A ton, a ton. Uh, I mean, they get you so indebted that, y y you know, they feel that you won't be able to go against the system because you're so indebted to the system. But these times are changing. Now, over here, look at this. In the Americas and in Egypt, they were able to not just, you know, hop on a boat and cross the Atlantic or cross the Pacific. There still was technology uh, available uh, to go through the air and also go in the earth, as many of these beings knew of and were in communication with the inner earth civilizations. Uh, not all inner earth civilizations are reptilian, clearly state that. They are not. And, and again, here you actually see some of the hair still there. So this from 2014. This has been ongoing for a decade. And yeah, you know, they don't want this info out there. As you see another uh, artist uh, representation of this, this person they call Cinnamon, this particular one. These beings, if Cindy doesn't remember, um, we did channel about these beings before. They were hunted down. They, they were. The system used Homo sapiens to hunt them down. And so when the conquistadors came here, and the conquistadors bringing, uh, you know, the religious system and Christianity could easily, you know, tell people, these are demons. You're, you're dealing with demons. And you need to exterminate the demons. And this is this is part of what happened. So these beings, again, it's the same thing as, as burning witches. Anybody that has knowledge that can free people from the system is a threat to the system. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it, it is, it is. They, they definitely don't want um, this information out there massively. So, I mean, I really encourage people to... Look at your sources of information and go within. And if you see like a, a million views and and like a, a a day or two or three, then there's there's something up. There's something being pushed, and it's just there's no denying that anymore. And they really treat humans like a, a flock of birds. They keep them going <clears throat> in the direction in which they are comfortable with. And I I was reading through those articles too. Where they're making excuses for why why those uh those skulls were created the way they were and they were through surgery and through this means and through that means and the lying is just getting it's just getting kind of stupid you know it's getting laughable at this point i don't know who wrote that article but i would be ashamed of myself i really would i mean that's just a joke it is and look at what they've told us <laughs> oh yeah people are going to travel in little dugouts going these type of distances look where the lines are connecting you know, again we're talking peru and bolivia and brazil and you know going all the way and coming from the black sea the caspian sea area well why the black sea and why the caspian sea why why over there in the caucasus region because again What's over in Cap Cappadocia, for instance, during Kenyu? And so there's many places where people went into the earth, blocked off the exterior world, and waited for things to settle down before coming, coming back out and then spreading out all over the world again. And this is part of what they did. The only problem was, you know, the leftover humans that w didn't have the same lineage as Homo sapiens uh, they were to be hunted down and to be eliminated by the system because the system has to eliminate any threats to the system. 
So they literally scrambled and they went wherever they could go. Uh, and they were helped in an underground railroad fashion um, by certain beings that remembered the beautiful, benevolent, and um, positive information and teachings of these beings. And so, you know, it, they didn't necessarily go through up here, but literally also um, were able to cross in other areas and come to the Americas. It is interesting, too, even if you read uh, the Sumerian stories with the Anunnaki, um, they do make note that the Anunnaki themselves, you know, go from here. They go from the Middle East over to the Americas as well. And even with different wars amongst themselves, where certain groups of Anunnaki would, would leave and go to another area, the wars of the gods uh, were prevalent in the Bronze Age because the, the dark system was not fully put in place yet. Here is another. This this could be the woman that did the other one. Marsha Moore will we'll look more into it. But, you know, and, and this is a, a, a little one as well, obviously. The wars of the gods uh, are something that I think is also in our future as well. Because, again, now, now we're getting out of the Dark Age. Now things are going to become very, very evident. They've talked about technology that's going to be used in this war um, that's upcoming that will blow our minds. Well, again, there were so many things that blew our minds in the last Bronze Age. We have been alive just in the Dark Age, and we just crossed over from the information we got from the guides. That last eclipse was the actual end of the Kali Yuga. But still, the system is still in place, and, and there is a transition period. This was a, a, a good article that somebody put together um, going and looking at things from uh, the Hindu perspective, looking through the Vedas, the Rig Veda, and the other Vedas, as well as the Puranas, which there are many. Um, the Bhagavata Purana is, is the preeminent one. And then we have the Yoga Sutras, the Shiva Sutras. There's so many books, they dwarf what's in uh, the new and old testament and they even dwarf what's left out of the new and the old testament uh, as well and they clearly state that there's many different uh, humanoid species in our our universe and even in our area this says there are 32 varieties of human species on the planet derived from a proto group of three now again if you were just looking at what's written down, we're going to find that the controllers have distorted uh, everything. So the real thing to do is to develop that ability to go within yourself. There is nothing to be prized more than your consciousness and develop that spiritual practice on a daily basis. Again, our lives are centered around it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just what we do. It's how we function. It's how we operate. Um, and, and, and it is, it, it's a life change to move to a spiritual nature, but everyone has their own individual path. And what I like about it is it's so expansive. You don't have to go by any one person's rules. In fact, th these are anything that bothers you or irritates you you're invited to move into that and ask well why does that bother you why does this rub me the wrong way why am i angry because anger and pain they are great teachers um, because they get us to really really look at the problem absolutely and i and i do like um what they're saying here you know again as our consciousness expands it's going to naturally begin to take us to merge with other planetary systems and the consciousness of other beings. Cindy and I had so many visits out in the desert in the area close to Area 51, uh, right next to Nellis Air Force Base. We literally lived right across the street from, from there. And um, we would get beings that would stop and check us out because our light bodies are activated where most humans are not, but more and more are popping on. And the guides were saying, 
uh, this tapestry of light that is turning on uh, on Earth right now is a thing of beauty. Well, it is. It is. And um, this tapestry, this picture, this what we call Earth, you can look at it like a, it, it is a giant tapestry. And everyone that is on the Earth, humans are a very important point of light on that tapestry. And as the lights turn on, on and as the lights turn off as the lights change as the lights intermingle and expand this is what's creating such a beautiful picture of earth this is what makes earth so very 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 unique and you know wherever you're at on the light spectrum trust that you're in the right spot because there are no mistakes there are no um, situations where you know you should not have done something there's a, a divine guidance guiding you and allow that to do what it does and as long as your heart is in the right spot you're doing the right thing you know as long as you are okay with what's going on around you you're doing the right thing but I, I just thought it was so beautiful and the guides were pointing that out to me after mantras as everyone is a is a very beautiful point of light on this tapestry and you're where you're at for a very important reason and when it's time for you to shift change your light or when it's time for you to move positions and move your light just know that that light is going to be right where it needs to be to create the most beautiful picture that you could ever imagine so I hope you guys got something from this. We look forward to your comments. We leave you with a little loving, uh, nurturing there. You know, the source that's within you and me and Cindy and all of us is the same source that's right here. And you can see the love that's shining through. The system tells us uh, that because of the vehicle, there's a difference in the source essence. But that, again, is a delusion as well as we transmigrate from one body to another in order to experience a new perspective. It's just a natural order of things. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.